welcome back to Fine Art Review. Today we are going to look at a painting of a German landscape painter named Karl Böhme. And uh, this is his work. This is the painting I initially wanted to show you guys because to me this is absolutely insane just looking at it in this format. I really want to see this painting and apparently it was auctioned off for about 40,000 euros. Um, most likely to a private uh, owner. Something that's really fascinating is that the quality of Burma's work is insane. Like, technically speaking, like speaking in speaking about techniques, his work is completely fascinating. He has such a tremendous understanding for what it is he's painting and how he's about to paint it or how he's going to approach it. That is really clear to me at least, just by looking at some of his paintings. This painting is however not in high resolution and I couldn't find it but just looking at these cliffs the sort of presence in here turning into somewhat more of an illustrative type of deal something Edgar Payne looking over here um, it's a bit illustrative in my opinion while it's really realistic here and the water, not even, I mean, also super realistic. Um, something that is fascinating to me is, however, how many paintings uh, there are out there to be bought by Burma for not a lot of money, which is, uh, I don't know what that is about. <laughs> but either way, this is really what I wanted to look at, just this just this negative shape here and the play between the background and the cliffs is I don't know what it is about it it's not that it looks like a face or anything like that it they just play perfectly together I think it maybe it's something with the design in the clouds that are also mirrored in the in the cliffs something like it but it's just fantastic and I de I'd love the depth in this painting too but we're not gonna look at this painting too much because there's very little to analyze and, and and to talk about in this type of painting with this type of resolution is really bad so we're gonna jump to another painting that's almost as good um, in my opinion obviously you're welcome to do the judging yourself but this is the painting <laughs> and I mean this is also ridiculous so Burma apparently um, wasn't very well known this painting is painted in, in 1930 uh, that's what it says here at least I trust him um, he wasn't very famous for his paintings except for the ones in Capri in Italy or if it was that those paintings is his most famous ones probably um, but if he wasn't that famous that would sort of explain why a lot of the paintings that are out there on auction isn't too expensive um, this is just fantastic though <laughs> I mean the light effect here hitting the water is yeah it's spot on I mean to a certain degree this painting feels a little sort of um, maybe not romanticized but idealized I guess um, but also yeah it's made up a little bit because these yellows and these purples I don't know if you'd find them in, in real life really um, but I've never been to Capri and Capri like all the places in the world have extremely unique lighting so this is also painted in Capri and uh, so maybe that's something who knows maybe there's a lot of red in the rocks there and and the, the distant cliffs 
to might seem that purple who knows either way the the relationship here between the yellow and the purple and the sort of green turquoise ish is really nice it's a really nice color um color relationships really really nice big color relationships are insane um I'm not 100% sure about the cliff right here. I mean, definitely helps to understand where he's painting from. Um, so it's necessary to sort of describe these waves hitting here. He's being true to nature in that sense. Um, I'd say his other cliffs are better. A lot of paintings that he's done, he has way more sort of... In a lot of other paintings, he has cliffs that are painted with much more focus or attention, I'd say. But we can zoom in on this painting because this is absolutely fascinating. We can see his brush strokes. And I think that Burma's has got to be, Burma has got to be one of the painters that sort of perfected painting water, technically speaking. There, you, you, I guess you can argue that this is kind of flat in terms of, of color depths and, and whatnot. Um, looking closely, it doesn't feel as realistic as it does here. Um, and I don't know why that is. Maybe all the colors are opaque. Um, or it's the fact that it is not complementary colors, but rather or that it isn't complementary colors. I'm not sure. There's something about it that I'm not a super fan of, but but the technique you, you can't you can't argue against that. The sort of shape the science he has in here. I love to see that he's designed a lot of the transparencies or the the dark shadowy bits of of the water, he's designed them through through painting with the negative, so it really really helps to give you that complexity in the water. Look at look at this shape here, right? It's so easy as a painter, especially when painting water, to sort of forget about the planes and the complexity of the water, I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating to be able to paint it this well because there's so much to think about. But when a lot of painters try to approach painting, the process becomes incredibly repetitive and painting water in Alla Prima situations is also something that's really difficult, meaning you, you going into painting water in one session doesn't always work. In some situations, definitely. A still water that's crispy and sort of completely blank, re high reflective. Um, that might be fine in an Alla Prima situation, but something like this, probably not. And Burma for sure didn't paint this in one session. That to me is, is really clear because he has some type of transparencies on top of the dark greens, brighter in value, and uh, I mean, if it's a viridian, I mean, to me, the green at least looks sort of transparent as a pigment. So, when you're putting something that's this bright on top, and together with that type of pigment, I feel like they would have mixed extremely. They would have mixed instantly, and they sort they're they're very separated here. So I'm assuming that this is applied dry on top of that green, and the same the same here. I don't feel like this is a wet on wet type of blend. It feels like it's a brush stroke from here, sort of transparent yellow, maybe a yellow with a lead white, going on to a dry green turquoise. I don't know if this is viridian green. I'm curious what type of palette he might have had actually. Definitely purples in here. Most likely like could depends on what
Maybe it's a cobalt violet. Maybe it's a daxazine. I actually have it. Yeah, deoxazine violet. I think that was the first uh, purple pigment that came out to the to for the commercial artists. Um, but then again, 1930s. So yeah, could be any other. It could be a variation of purples for sure. But, I mean, it's incredible how you design this type of water. It requires you knowing your subject so well. It's, it's absolutely insane, to be honest. It's nice. Oh, I like this too. The sky. This is a good example of how you, you don't necessarily... A lot of people tend to paint their skies like darker at the top and brighter down there. I would argue that it's brighter in front. Maybe particular for this type of lighting situation, that it's brighter in value up here and darker down there. But I think this, even even though the, the lighting situation might be that sort of specific, I think it's a good uh, example of the fact that you don't have to have uh, your sky being brighter, close to the horizon. Uh, maybe even the opposite, actually, like it going darker. Yeah, I think I think there's some people that are, are practicing that darker just before the horizon. Uh, yeah, I do that too sometimes. Um, and that, I think that that's something that's important, especially if you're painting water. If you're painting the horizon, the extreme horizon, like that, you need to be aware of, of what your horizon is going to look like, what the sky is actually doing there. Because the relationship between that horizon line and the edge of the of the sky that will determine your full value compression, sort of. Um, and definitely have a lot to say about this. Look at that. Yeah, look how yellow it is under there. Coat of cadmium lemon or cadmium l type of light pale yellow and then just pure white on top of it. It's nice and you get that sort of sunny glow to it but you still like get the peak of, of value to explain that reflecting light in there and then obviously the other whites are com yeah super colorful. Yeah. That's nice. Super turquoise and bluish oh my god look at this wave here what <laughs> come on this guy and even this sort of like maybe dried brush on top to indicate that water is flowing off of the rock same here and some type of like oh it's yeah, look at this splashing water towards the distance a breaking wave with the blue in the shadows. Maybe it's a bit too blue for my taste or my opinion. Maybe that's the pigment actually changing or or something throughout time. But he's clearly like showing all the elements of how water works. Look at this. Yeah. Look at that. That's a nice detail. really nice and this is also quite smart to be honest because so he's made a sort of wall here and here of the waves breaking and then immediately after that sort of stepping into this isn't as important this water is further away same here not as much detail not as much effort as he would have around here which is also kind of the same distance to be honest but he's clearly spent more focus more time in this area because this is where the light is this is where the horizon is this is where you want to go you can go into here as well enter into the shadows and whatnot travel up here and come back down find the wave thrown back into the water, go back out, 
you have so much uh, routes to sort of travel in the painting and you'll end up at the horizon. I mean, look at that, there's some bolts down there as well. So clearly, um, you know what I was doing compositionally. I have the light coming through. It's almost, it's almost ridiculous, but it is, it is fascinating. Carl Bermud. Incredible. Look at those like playful sort of tiny shifts between the more brownish yellow to the more palish yellow to the purple to the sort of pink orangey thing changing into a darker value just before the horizon. I mean it's so so subtle but it's so important it really helps you sort of describe that naturalistic atmosphere. The clouds actually further away being being uh, having less contrast between the light and the shade. Amazing painting. Really amazing. So apparently, uh, apparently he he painted these on plein air. So on the spot. I don't know if. It was in the 1930s, he might have used references from photos or stuff like that, but he apparently spent some of the paintings I think are painted from from a castle or a hotel or, or villa or something like that. I think it's in the name, like sunset from the villa in Capri or something like this. I'm not, I don't remember it correctly. Um, so this could very well have been like from a tiny little balcony. If you look at those type of old buildings on the cliff sides, you know, you have a huge window facing the ocean. Uh, could very well have been something like that. Because clearly this is a multi-session painting and uh, I don't, I, I don't want to speculate how long it could have taken him, but I'm sure it took him a while. But yeah, it's just incredible. Carl Burma, if you don't know him, uh, look him up. Um, an artist I haven't really seen in in uh, in museums at all. Who definitely, I mean, deserves a lot more attention than than that. Why isn't he talked about in in the same sense as? many other huge painters. Either way, uh, I think that's it for this video. Um, if you liked it, obviously, subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video. If you have any suggestions of artists that I should look into, I've already gotten a couple of uh, suggestions that will be coming up. Um, if you do, let me know in the comments or send a message or something, because it would be interesting to sort of be surprised by by what I'm looking at as well. Alright, take care. See you in the next one.